So continuing the series on the HTML5 canvas, now I want to look at images, how we can take images, put them onto the canvas, how we can adjust the images once they're on the canvas, resize them, crop them, take pieces of the image, change them to grayscale, extract certain channels from the colors, from the image itself. Okay, so I have a canvas and I have an image tag on the page and this image tag has nothing to do with what we're going to do on the canvas other than to say this is the original image this is the one that we're going to be working with it does not have to be on the page it doesn't have to be loaded through an image tag for any of this to work it's just there as a representation of the original image so on the canvas dom content loaded set the context to 2d set the width and the height so the typical stuff that we do to set the canvas up every time then I'm going to create a new image, and this is going to be what I use to load the image, to fetch the image so that I can put it onto the canvas. Now my image object, I'm going to be setting its source to a local image, which is this one right here. So you can see if I mouse over it, there it is, there's the image. And by default, it's 1530, or sorry, 1350 by 900 pixels. That's the size. It's 1350 pixels wide, 900 pixels high. Now, my canvas is only 600 by 400. I'm going to have to resize the image. Like right here, I'm doing width 80%. So I am resizing it with CSS when I display it here. But on the canvas, I'm dealing with 600 pixels by 400 pixels. I can resize it or crop it. Different ways I can deal with it. But I'm going to put it on the canvas. But I have to wait until the image has loaded. So create our image object set up an on load listener or we could have used add event listener load and then have the function works either way with source set that will trigger this on load once it's finished then i'm going to find out these two things right here natural width and natural height now i have another video if you don't know what those are i have another video that talks about the differences between natural height and width and the image width and height and through CSS and through HTML and what those different properties are. I'll put a link to that in the description for you if you're interested. So I'm finding out how big this actually is. This is going to give me that 1350 and this is going to give me that 900. The reason I get these numbers is so I can calculate the aspect ratio. That's what this next line here is. So I'm taking the natural width divided by the natural height. That gives me the aspect ratio of this image. How wide is it? to the height. What's the ratio comparing these two dimensions? I do that because I'm going to take the canvas width. So this is my 600. I take my 600, or we could say here W instead of canvas width. I can take that number and divide it by the aspect ratio. That's going to tell me how tall. So if I'm changing this to 600, what is this value supposed to be? And that's what we're calculating right here, this H. So if we console log that. So the height will be this. We know the width is going to be 600 because we've set it to that. All right. Now, once that's done, then I use this method right here, this draw image method. This is built in. Again, it's called on the context object, not the canvas object, but the context object. Draw image. You pass in the image. So this is my image right here, this object. I'm passing that image in, and I'm saying these four numbers right here. So you can see there's three different ways that I can call this method. One with three values, one with five, and one with nine. With three, I'm just saying Here's the starting coordination, the destination X and Y coordinates. So 0, 0 means I want to start it right here in the top corner. And if I just did that, let's comment out these last two lines. Let's run this. There we go. All right, so it ran it. I haven't resized it at all. I just loaded it and drew it here. So I'm getting this chunk right here. I'm only getting about half the width and half the height, this portion right here, because that's all that fits on 600 by 400. If I want to change the size of it, 
that's why we have these other values. So the second version where we have five things, we're giving a destination width and height. So starting at zero, zero, how big do I want to make it? Now we have the image at the same size as our canvas. So we've resized it from this to this. Now, if I change these numbers, let's say to 2020, there you can see it started 20 pixels in, 20 pixels down. That was the starting point. And I means I'm losing part of the image right here. So let's put these back to zero and zero. So it fills the canvas entirely. Great. Now the other values that we can put in here, if we put in nine, then these four numbers become the last four numbers. These first ones, these are the source X and Y, the source width and height. So if I wanted to get a little piece of the image right here, like this, let's say we're going to start at, uh, so X will start at zero. So starting at zero X and for the Y, I know it's 900 tall. So what's that? That's about 600, let's say 650. So starting at zero 650, how much do I want to take? Well, starting at zero 650, I'm going to, and I've deleted one of my zeros there. I'm going to take, let's say a 200 by 300 section. Now the aspect ratio isn't going to be quite right. I could take 200 and divide it by our aspect ratio. That would give me a perfect value. There we go. So I've got, uh, it looks like this piece right here. Yeah, that looks about right. So these things yeah, so I'm extracting a little piece right here from the middle of this image. And, oh, sorry, no, I said that I was starting at zero. So it's just this first part right here. Yeah, this is the part right here that I'm extracting. I'm taking this little piece and I'm putting this on the canvas. So the source X and Y, that's the starting point, and then the width and height from this point, that's what we extracted, and that's what we put up here on the canvas. Okay, so those are the different ways that we can call our draw image method. I'll run this once again, get the image back to this. And one other thing that I wanted to show you was how you can manipulate the image data. Once you have it on the canvas, you now have access to every single pixel in that image. And there is a red, a green, a blue, and an alpha channel. So there's four numbers for every pixel on here and those are all available to us as an array so let's take a look at that let's open up this method here called grayscale we're going to convert this image to a grayscale it's actually a quite simple thing to do we call get image data this method on the context we provide just like draw image starting at zero zero i'm going to take the whole thing so the width and the height. So I'm grabbing the full canvas here and I'm saying, get me the image data. So it's going to give me one object, the image data object. That's what my variable here is, image data. This is everything that's on there. And I want to get the property called data from that object. There's a width and a height and there's an image object uh, property as well. I just want to get the data array. So that's my variable array. Now I was saying there's the four channels, red, green, blue, alpha. So the first four values in my array are gonna be the red, the green, the blue, the alpha of the first pixel. The next four are gonna be the second pixel. And it just will read through this starting here and it'll read every pixel across and then it goes to the next line and it reads every pixel across and so on and so on and so on. It's a big, big, big array. I'm looping through this array and I'm going to increment it by four each time. So every time I increment, I'm dealing with one pixel. I've got four values. So I do the first four and then I jump ahead to the fifth one and then I jump ahead four and then I jump ahead four. Each time I step through, I know that the number I, that's the red. 
I plus 1 is the green, I plus 2 is the blue, I plus 3 would be the alpha. So to convert something to grayscale, now this isn't perfect grayscale, but a quick and easy way to do it is take those three numbers, add them together, divide them by 3, turn it back into an integer. This is the average converted back into an integer, and then I set all three, the red, the green, the blue, all three of those are going to be set to the same number. And if you know anything about hex values in HTML, oops, red, green, blue, if you know anything about hex values, you know that if you set all three numbers to the same value, or with an RGB method, you set all three numbers to the same value, you're going to get some shade of gray. Once you've done that, we're taking our updated array and we're passing it back into the data property of this image data object. And then we pass that back in by calling put image data. So get image data, put image data, starting at these coordinates. So we refresh. If I click on here, it's going to call grayscale. And there it is. The image has been converted to grayscale. One click done to grayscale. All right, now the other one, the other method, color channel. Same idea. I'm just playing with those four values. Get the image data, loop through it, and then here. All right, if I'm setting the blue channel, every value in the blue channel, so I'm looping, I'm incrementing by four. So I'm looking at one pixel at a time. And for every pixel, I'm setting the blue, the blue value to zero, putting it back in, put image data. All right, refresh. There we go. Now you can see I have now removed the blue channel. Or I can come in here and say, you know what? I don't want the green channel. So I'll refresh, click again. There's the green channel removed. Or we can come in here and say, set the red channel to zero. There it is. Or you want to remove two of them. All right, let's remove the red and the blue. There it is. Green is the only color left. So that's the green channel. And you can play with this or you can make modifications. You want to amp up one channel by incrementing the numbers inside of there. Just make sure you don't go over 255 because that's the maximum integer value for any one of these. 255. There's 255 for red, 255 for green, 255 for blue, and 255 for the alpha. That's the maximum number you can put for any of those. All right, so that gives you a lot to play with. You can experiment and do lots of different things with the pixel data that's inside of here. You can extract it, save the array, do whatever you like. And one last thing that I want to show you is just, okay, now that I've done this change to the data on the canvas, how can I take that and put it into an image? So down inside of here, that's what I'm going to do now. Let's create a new variable called image. And I want to take all that image data from the canvas and say, give me an actual image that I can use. So canvas, this is one of the uh, one of the few methods that you would call on the canvas object instead of the context. And we want to say get image data it takes two parameters. They're both defaults, but the MIME type. So we've got JPEG or PNG that we can use. I'm going to get JPEG. And then I want to know what's the quality level for JPEG. You can say how much compression. I'm going to say zero compression. So full quality. Then we'll take our image tag, document query selector. We only have one image tag on the page. This one right here. It's the first one on the page, so query selector is going to give that to me. And we'll set its source equal to this image object that we just created. So that's the extracted data from the image. Refresh. So when I click on here, it's going to convert this to green to um, remove the red and the blue channel, so it's only the green, and then it's going to take all of that data, convert it to a data URL, and put it inside of here, or sorry, it's going to get the image data, sorry, not get image data, to data URL. <laughs> Wrong method. There we go. So canvas to data URL, 
JPEG, full quality, image object, going to be set as the source. So this is our data URL. Refresh, and there we go. So converted, and then fed back into here. And if you want to see what this is, this data URL, let's do a console.log image. You can see what a data URL looks like. It's the uh, base64 version. There we go, of the binary data. And there we are. We can see it's this big, 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 long string. It starts with data, colon, the format, a semicolon, and then base64, comma, and then all of this. This is the image data. It's all base64, and there's 341,575 more characters <laughs> if we wanted to display them inside of there. We don't need to see the whole thing. It is a very big string. So that is what we're doing here. With two data URL, we're getting the base64 encoded version of the data from this string, which we can then send to the server if we want, or just display it on the page. So I hope that uh, piques your interest and encourages you to go and start experimenting with images in Canvas, because there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.